and say, am I doing ministry as my call or am I doing ministry as my profession? And there's something absolutely different in your walk in life when you are not a Christian professionally, but you are a Christian out of conviction. Uh, Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true. Uh, and so many people, you got to ask yourself, particularly preachers have to ask themselves, if you weren't in ministry, would you be able to drive like that? If you weren't in ministry, would you be able to live that kind of opulent and decadent lifestyle? And so at some point, where is the marriage between your charisma, your character, and your conviction? And what happened for me and what is what has happened to a lot of people in ministry uh, is that my church uh, became my wife and my wife became my mistress. And at some point, you got to put into accountability that your household is your first ministry. And if you lose your household and you're preaching to 10,000 people, it is of no consequence. The greatest warfare of every person who is in the public sex specter is what I'm doing. Am I doing it for image or am I doing it for integrity? And every person has to make that decision when I walk out of my house in the morning. Who am I getting dressed for? Am I getting dressed for the image of what people perceive me to be? Or am I getting dressed for the integrity of what God has called me to be? God asked Solomon a very critical question. Do you want fame? Do you want popularity? Do you want militaristic strength? And Solomon says, I want wisdom. And the Lord says, if you want wisdom, then I'll give you everything else. And we're living in a, a postmodern church age where we are re rearing people to pray for getting a car and getting clothes and getting promotion, and nobody is praying for common sense. I, I, I can pray, and much of the foreclosures that have happened in the black community are attributable to the black church because we lied to people for 15 years and said the sign of your favor is what kind of car you got, what kind of house you live in, and what kind of check you're cashing. But when those same saints had their house foreclosed, we no longer said God is the one that put you in that house and it's the church's responsibility to help you maintain it. When they lost the, lost the house because they didn't read the fine print on the bubble that was getting ready to come the three to five years down, then the enemy is busy. At some point, we got to deal with the hard nuts and bolts of making some common sense decisions so that we can stop self-sabotaging behavior. The reality is, for black Christians, we got to be honest enough to say, the devil never made us sleep with anybody. The devil never made us smoke anything, and the devil never made us drink anything. Uh, but we are given uh, the very basic fundamental principle of theology is the theology of free will. We get to choose. God doesn't even force himself on us. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you let me in, then I'm going to come in. Otherwise, Jesus would be guilty of breaking and entering. So every person has got to make the critical decision, got to make the critical choice. Am I, in fact, going to be popular or am I going to be smart? Here are my three little girls uh, who are with me. Come on. Uh, grace angel in the door. Uh, and so uh, they, they, this is uh, really what you put into uh, perspective for yourself put into perspective for yourself every day. Am I preaching just so that three, 10, 15,000 people can say preach black man? Or at the end of the day, these three young ladies are gonna grow up and will not respect the church because of how it is that I res disrespected their mother. At some point I gotta make up in my mind is I'm living a life of integrity or am I living a charade for the stage? And so the three of them made me really recalibrate what am I doing ministry for? Am I doing ministry just to put them in private school, just to make sure that they win gap for kids? Am I, doing, am I doing ministry just so that they can go to ballet class and go swimming? Or am I living a ministry so that when these three young ladies grow up, I want a man of Christian conviction that didn't act a bipolar lifestyle, that was in fact preaching one thing on Sunday morning, but did not live that same thing after the benediction was over. And so at the end of the day, my real ministry is not to the 10,000 people in Baltimore at Empowerment Temple or the millions of people on TBN. But at the end of the day, my ministry really bottoms down to these three little girls. And if at the end of the day, I have reared and lived such a life that they say Christianity is worth something because of how it is that my father lived after the benediction, then no sermon I can preach will ever measure that. My grandmother of sainted memory said, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. Uh, and so I really hope that every person would really win the war over image and live a life of integrity because at the end of the day, our children are watching and looking to see will our actions speak louder than our words. Thank you so much.